Hello and welcome to another episode of the CG Garage. This is episode number 326 featuring Bo Perschel and Dade Oregon from Turbo Squid, now part of Shutterstock, which is a very exciting thing and definitely something we talk about in the podcast. Uh, Kristen, what do you think of Bo and Dade on this podcast? Uh, well, this is a great one. Um, we uh-huh. get to learn all about like kind of Turbo Squid and how it's become the go-to for VFX games and like so much more um, mm-hmm. after starting in 2000. Um, mm-hmm. And then they also discuss uh, how Shutterstock acquired Turbo Squid um, at the beginning of was that this year, I think. Yeah, I think um, so. It's pretty recent. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and they just have like a much bigger uh, reach now to customers. Um and now the customers get to choose kind of like their own angle opposed to like a regular stock image. So it was cool hearing about that. Um, and then they also talk about Pixel Squid and Kraken, their um, their DAM digital asset yep. manager. Management. Absolutely. Think, so yeah, they they are Turbo Squid is really cool. I mean, I remembered. I mean, I said this on the podcast. I remember when they first started in two thousand. I was like, that is a cool idea for a company, and and I just it just it made sense. And they've grown so much more beyond that, obviously, for like you said, with with Kraken and 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 uh, Turbo's uh, Turbo's <laughs> Pixel Squid, Pixel Squid. Uh, and and so uh, they they do a lot of stuff. We actually talk about machine learning and some of the tools they use there, and then how they basically they suddenly their user base or the the, the has grown so much through Shutterstock. People can just basically make their own custom uh, stock photography in some ways. So that's really kind of an amazing uh, idea of what they have and, and what's going on, and and just. I've known Bo for for many years, so it's really kind of cool seeing him and what they've done. And you know, them based out of New Orleans, that's been their 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 pride and and what they do. And I, I just I, I just think they're really great guys. And that's where they started actually. When when uh, uh, SIGGRAPH two thousand is was in New Orleans, and that's when I first heard of them. And they were they were they were awesome. So ah, brings me back, Kristen, twenty one <laughs> years ago, twenty one years ago. <laughs> Yep. Also, I'm getting old. So uh, anyway, that's that's the story uh, behind that. So I think you guys are going to really appreciate uh, what you're doing. And also, you know, there they we talk about you know if you want to contribute to Turbo Squid, some of the things you should look at, or some of the things you should be considering in terms of what you're contributing to that to that thing. So really great uh, having them on. So thank you so much, Bo and Dade. I don't think we have any big announcements this week. We're gonna we go. Uh, keeping a little low, but keep an eye on things. Remember to just check us out at chaos.com. If you have anything, uh, the, any announcements will be going up in that area there. Uh, I do also want to say one more thing. Unfortunately, there was some sad news that happened um, earlier uh, last week. Uh, Art Gensler passed away, and that's a kind of a big deal for me. Uh, Gensler was the first company really that I worked on that I worked for after I, I graduated from 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 Rice from my architecture degree and I, I stayed at Gensler for for several years for about five years or so and it was a fantastically run company uh, and it was really innovative and uh, f- that is why it grew to the biggest architecture firm of all time and a lot of that had to do with uh, Art Gensler himself and the attitude he had about people and how the company should be run so uh, he was a wonderful person and a really uh, humble person as well and he said some incredible things uh, when I did a podcast with him uh, way back when back in I think 2016 or so uh, but you guys should check it out so it's episode 99 with Art Gensler and uh, I want to you know wish wish everyone uh, well at, at the Gensler family and at the Gensler company and tell him that uh, he is definitely sh- sorely missed so thank you Art and thank you Gensler all right Kristen do we have any announcements about the podcast if people want to know more about the podcast where do they need to go you can go to facebook.com slash CG Garage podcast or chaos.com slash CG Garage. And then if you want to watch us on YouTube, you go to youtube.com slash chaos group TV. Perfect. And if you guys have ideas for the podcast or things you'd like us to cover, please let us know. Uh, it is labs at chaosgroup.com is our email. Uh, we, as you guys know, we've been doing a whole bunch of things on NFTs and we will continue to be doing those uh, scattered throughout every two or three episodes. Uh, so uh, check those out. I know some of you guys may be following the podcast now uh, because of that. So more to come just so you guys know, but I definitely think that you guys should check out uh, uh, this podcast with uh, with Bo and Dave. So that with that, please enjoy episode number to uh, 326 uh, with the guys from Turbo Squid, now part of Shutterstock. Welcome to another CG Garage. 
where the chaos group talks. You'll know it's over when the last bucket drops. We're gonna fire off rays in high dynamic range. We know that ambient occlusion is passe. Global illumination won't lead you astray. And while image-based lighting is really swell, you need to make sure everything has for now. I have very, very vivid memories of SIGGRAPH <laughs> oh. 2000 in New Orleans. Uh, yep. That that was it. That was the beginning, I think. That was, I remember it, it very was when much... We- Wow. That, that, yes. that tur- Turbo Squid Days. It was like announced there. I was like, what a cool name for a company. <laughs> <laughs> then we rolled it out. We had lanyards that had, we had to go to like fishing and bait shops around to get the little rubber squids that they'd hang, that they hung on all of the lanyards. Um, they played Stump the Squid. We'd had enough content up there that uh, Matt Hales, who at the time was the was the creative director, was basically sitting up there on a computer just waiting for people to call out stuff at the convention center in New Orleans and seeing if we actually had it. And right. I think about 80% of what people called out, we had. Nice. Um, obviously, they weren't thinking too deep and going to things like Russian ice pavers or things right. like that. We probably didn't have <laughs> yeah. right away. But um, yeah, that was, a, that was a heck of a show at that point. Um, we had the big event at the Howlin' Wolf. To announce the company as well, so a big party there as well. In the days when there were lots of parties at SIGGRAPH and yeah. things like that, that was that might have been time. the last big SIGGRAPH, honestly speaking, where there was like tons of money going into SIGGRAPH. <laughs> yeah, especially on the East Coast, given the fact that you know we had been to San Antonio and Boston and other places in subsequent years, and they just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You're just like, oh man, yeah. this is no fun. I believe they so. actually had an animatronic dolphin uh, at. <laughs> Uh, on the floor, I do remember that, and wow. and so it was like this dolphin. It was just like this big aquarium with a dolphin that's like you know probably only about that takes up like over fifty percent of the size of this aquarium. And they had like an umbilical cord coming out of it where they were controlling this dolphin. I don't know why it was there. The funniest oh, part wow. is that I saw a pita truck outside of the convention center because I think they thought it was a real dolphin. <laughs> of course. You can't have the abuse of the electronic dolphin. That's so really I, funny, I actually yeah. don't remember that at all. Yeah. Um, not at all. I, the only other SIGGRAPH I really have fond memories of was 2008. And, yeah. You know, after Katrina where we had the, you know, the Habitat for Humanity build and we had kids Literally, we're out there building, sweating to death in August heat in New Orleans, yep. of course. And we've gotten all the 3D people who are about as in shape as you can imagine. <laughs> and they're all sitting there. We're hammering nails and smashing our thumbs and, you know, trying to survive. And suddenly this car pulls up and the doors open. All four doors open. It's a little sedan, too. It's like a Nissan Sentra or something. Uh-huh. And like eight kids pile out and we're looking at them and we're like, who are you? They're like, we're here for the squid build. We drove from Minnesota, like overnight, two days. Like wow. all of these kids showed up to help. And it was the most incredible thing on the planet. It was so much fun. That they, they were like, yeah, we survived the drive. It's like, man, you guys are committed. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So what, tell us a little bit, what was the inspiration? Because obviously nowadays, the idea of having a store where you sell user content is makes sense back then that was a very very new idea in fact the internet was pretty new still kind of so what where where, what was the incentive here what where did that all come from i think that at the time what we were seeing is is that a lot of us had been in production at one point or another matt wisdom who is our ceo was doing production for um his own company called chimera digital imaging I had at the time been working at Digimation, so we were doing production work there a little bit, and I had done lots of production before that in my former life, and you know, Dade's been doing it as well for that long, uh, if not longer, that we noticed that a company like Viewpoint Data Labs, which was the yeah. company to go to, had these just, we'd got the catalogs, and we'd see them at the trade shows, and you were always there, and you'd open up the catalog, and you're like, these ten thousand dollars suck. <laughs> yes, they were just terrible, untextured, super expensive, and we're like, but every artist has content sitting on their drives. Why wouldn't we try and leverage that 
And so mm-hmm. we talked to friends and then we reached out to a couple of bigger companies. I think one of the early adopters was like Rhythm and Hughes. Mm-hmm. Um, actually sent us a CD with all of the, you know, Babe the Pig and the Coca-Cola Polar Bears and some other, you know, really kind of high quality models that were like, wow, okay, we can sell these. And so we got enough buy-in early on that we th- figured let's try and go get investment. And it was, yeah, we, we were definitely probably five years too early to what we wanted to do. I mean, when we got funded was it, April of 2000, April 1st was when we actually got our funding. And it was wow. just as the dot-com bubble was bursting, like literally going off the cliff as right. we were like one of the last companies to be invested in. And our investors were like, well, this is over. It's fun. We gave you our money. We're not going to talk to you forever. Good luck. And we succeeded and, you know, survived and, and grew and, and make it all work. So it was, um, you know, it, it's been a fun ride, but it was certainly interesting to see, you know, we, we played kind of the Southwest Airlines to Delta at that point. It's just right. we wanted to have easy to consume, easy to publish, let the artists set their prices, figure out how the market should actually work instead of controlling it with you're building everything internally. It's a complete walled garden and you're overcharging people who are, you know, suffering and under kind of soul crushing deadlines. So that yeah. was the impetus. Yeah. I mean, there were, like you said, there were, there were companies like Viewpoint before that, or what was the Dis- Dispona library? Remember the Dispona library? The Dispona. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Rem Infographica. Right. Yeah. And so, the, and they were much cheaper than, than Viewpoint, but, but it was still a, a you know, you only got what they have, <laughs> which was, you know, right. it was a lot of stuff, but it was just a limited thing. Right. And it was not yeah. really going to grow beyond that because that was it, you know, not, not without custom pricing. I mean, at that point they're like, take the Pharaoh arm and digitize a car point by point and charge you 30 to $50,000 to do that. It was, that was ludicrous. Right. Right. So, and you're absolutely right. So like everyone has his stuff. Why build it twice when someone's already built it? <laughs> right. And yeah. let people monetize what they've worked on. I mean, right. You know, we have artists day. I, I mean, artists that love building automobiles and that's all they do day in and day out. No matter what you ask them to do, it's like, I can build the car. Right. Don't ask me to yeah. build a person or a computer or an iPhone, but uh, the cars I'll build until I die. No problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. It, it's a very dedicated community that specialized. Yeah, my my, I think I think my friend Bertrand does a lot of stuff on Turbo Squid as well. So he there's there's a lot of people who just build stuff. And it's like you know this is my pastime, right? And then you do it yeah. and you sell it, uh, and that's that's a great great way to monetize it. So the 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 idea now totally makes sense. In fact, it's back then it was revolutionary right you used to open an account you can either buy things or sell things and if you sell things you just the turbo squid just makes a cut of it right and that's basically how yeah. it works right? if, if you succeed we succeed that was really the whole business model behind it right and then and the price still point is. the price point is just gonna be like if you're not selling enough lower the price <laughs> right? yes we i mean we tried early on because you know at the time our investors wanted uh us to raise the prices and uh-huh. we didn't know what would happen, and we tried it, and literally we found that it was unit unit elastic. Is that we doubled the prices and lost half our customers. We're like, wow. okay, well that's not going to actually work out. So we ultimately abandoned that, and we've never kind of tried to restrict the pricing. We've given guidance, but we don't try and do it that the other way now. That's interesting. That's interesting. And Dane, yeah. when did you get involved in the company? So in the very that's beginning. About, no, no, no. That's about eight years ago. So I joined okay. in. Uh, I'm a New Orleans native as uh-huh. well, but uh, was living all over the place. And uh, my background was in mostly in advertising, so doing high end commercials, um, uh, all 3D uh, was my specialty. And so uh, I was a customer of Turbo Squid from probably day one. Uh, yeah. I spent a, <laughs> I spent a lot of money at Turbo Squid because uh, it mm-hmm. saved it saved my skin on on many uh, many projects. And yep. then. Um, uh, there was a there was an availability um, for a, a sort of a creative director position, uh, and uh, I said, "Well, I do that, so uh, why not do that in New Orleans, back at home, and for an awesome company like Turbo Squid?" So I joined uh, joined the board, and I tell you, it's been amazing. What a, what an amazing company to work for! It's just been uh, talk about growth and and uh, kind of uh, set your path, set your own way, and and um, and make great stuff. So it's been amazing. Right. So what is, what is your role as creative director? 
Go ahead. I was going to say ahead. that Dade, Dade actually has probably the singularly most unique resume we've ever gotten. Okay. And that it had these beautiful infographics that he had designed. Being an artist, he had done these things so that we knew exactly what um, he could do in terms of 3D, where his, where his strengths were, what he thought he knew how to do, which was totally underselling what he can actually do. Let's uh-huh. be honest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was it is still one of those things that I, I try and um at least let people know. It's like if you want to get a job in three D, make sure your resume shines. And Dave's was like one of the things Matt and I looked at originally were like, Holy cow, we gotta go meet this guy. We flew out nice. to New York to sit down with him. So nice. yeah. 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 yeah so what 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 was uh, what is your role as a creative director at Turbo Squiz? So how do what well, are the kind of things you do? So initially, I came on to sort of help uh, push the Pixel Squid project, um, which is our sort of 3D for 2D artist. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was a lot of curation and kind of figuring out what the specification should be and what or how artists should be working in order to create content for it, what the limitations should be. And uh, and that's really how I I got my feet wet at Turbo Squid was kind of understanding, um, you know, I have a creative background. So uh, coming in and thinking of things more technically. you know, it was a bit of a different um, sort of path for me. Uh, but then I was able to tie it all together with create, you know, more creative outputs and really kind of curate that collection into something that we wanted it to be. And it, and it, it grew into something very successful. Uh, and then from there, I, you know, we, there was always something that needed to get done. So there was, you know, I helped uh, rebrand the company, um, which mm-hmm. was a lot of fun. Yep. You know, um, uh, we, we had to we, grow up at some point. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah. redesigned a lot of things on the website. We have, um, you know, a new homepage uh, that we've redesigned. And um, and then, of course, there's there's other platforms that we have. There's there's Kraken, which is our uh, 3D asset management software. So figuring out what customers need for that and, and designing the UI and the UX for that. And so I, I wear lots and lots and lots of hats at TurboSquid. Right. Yep. Plus, yeah. plus we're building the specs together, you know, at, at this point for... We're all about standards for 3D. Now that you've got EBR yes. materials and all of that, it really kind of lends itself to finally saying, can we have content that is built to one standard that can flow pretty everywhere. much anywhere you need to yeah. need yeah. it to be? Because I, I want to get to the, to that because it, it, there's a lot <laughs> going on. Because you know, you start off basically as like, I'm just going to resell your store, your stuff. It's like, great. Cool, I got it. It's like, oh, but I need it for this platform. Oh, but I need it for this thing. Or do you have this texture? Oh, but the textures are in JPEGs or they're like, you know, EXRs and I don't read EXRs. Whatever, there's always going to be something, something yeah. that's happening. So it's got to be a thing. That's like it's building the store and the idea was a great idea. But then <laughs> you now have a lot more work that happened after that just to get things to be. Oh, usable yeah. for people, right? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I mean, to to start, it was it was the wild west. Right. You know, is the way to describe the storefront is is that you had variable quality stuff that could look great on the website when a customer bought it. They never got what they expected. Something was missing. There's a plugin that was needed. They didn't know about. Very yep. frustrating. So the first thing we did was offered you know free refunds, so customers didn't feel like they were locked out. If they bought something they didn't like, they could actually return it, and that's still true today. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, we started reaching out to all of our customers um, and specifically companies like Weta Digital and Blur and mm-hmm. Electronic Arts and CNN and IKEA and all these different industries to say, what do you guys need when you're buying stock models? Mm-hmm. What does it have to do? And we boiled all that down into the first standard, which we call Checkmate, which basically set kind of a threshold in terms of, you know, what does it take to to build a real professional piece of 3D content. It still didn't address the conversions. That is the bigger problem, which is the, hey, I love this model. It's a Max V-Ray model, and I'm a Cinema 4D Arnold unit. It's like, right. well, we can get you the geometry and the UVs, and we might be able to get some of the textures. That was a problem. Right. So we developed stem cell when we saw PBR coming out to help allow models to move uh, and be converted very, very easily. because. Right. PBR, you know, that Disney standard is a standard. Right. Yeah, it's just basically, and most renderers have a PBR friendly method of working. So mm-hmm. you just put it into Thank the goodness. whole system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, actually now, I mean, we can, we'll jump back and forth, but now there's obviously going to be a lot, the call for 
universal standards are becoming more important. So what is what is Turbo Squid and what what are your guys' thoughts on things like USD and what that's going to be? Dane, well, you want to take well, that we, one? Uh, so we are so we 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 are actually currently evolving our pipeline into a USD capable pipeline. So Mm-hmm. With with stem cell, uh, stem cell was sort of our first foray into an like uber flexible uh, piece of content, right? Can that, you explain that, that a little bit more, like how, how that so came out? And it really, like in its in its most simplest form, it's it's we we uh, sort of distilled a piece of three D content down into its its most needed components, and that was the geometry, of the UVs, and texture based materials. So mm-hmm. we kind of took the whole you know, procedural equation out of the picture. And now we're just dealing with things that are sort of baked down and ready to go. And then mm-hmm. from that, we worked to, to sort of train artists to make, you know, meshes that were clean and, and uh, simple silhouettes that looked correct without subdivisions, um, but you could easily add subdivisions. And so just really boiling down content into its most simplest form. And once we had that, then we could build these recipes for outputting uh, we, we need Max uh, V-Ray, you need Maya V-Ray, you need Cinema 4D V-Ray. We can now put all of those very, very easily just with this perfect set, uh, sort of intermediary, uh, which is a stem cell. And so mm-hmm. um, we currently, we use FBX to sort of carry that. What we do is we take your scene and we pull, uh, build, basically build a YAML file, which um, mm-hmm. you know injects all the material attributes into that file, and then an FBX and then we rebuild that in all the different applications. Well, now we're finding that we can actually do that with uh, USD. We can store a lot of those things inside of USD and not no longer have to rely on FBX for that. And then along with that, we can we can do more amazing things, right? We can save states and uh, we can have poses and uh, different um, materials for, for different states of the of the uh, model. And then we can process those things separately and. And I'll put, you know, syndicate that anywhere, right? If we wanted to syndicate it just to TurboSquid, it could go there. Or if we wanted to syndicate it to PixelSquid, it could, it could easily flow into that pipeline. We could render out those spinners, which is based off of V-Ray. Um, right. and, uh, and then we could also syndicate imagery if we wanted to to Shutterstock. So we could, we could sell actual renders of, of that object, um, flat renders. So it's, it really kind of just opens up a lot of possibilities once we have this perfect intermediary, which is uh, our stem cell. Yeah, that's interesting because it's got to be very challenging. I mean, everyone's been looking for a solution to do this in a lot of ways, which has been really great. Honestly speaking, the place that I'm seeing the most resistance to USD as the actual uh, uh, DCC applications are the ones that are reluctantly getting into it, yeah. <laughs> right? Because yeah. they I don't think their necessarily hands are being forced. At this they point. are right. They don't yeah. necessarily want someone to have a standard that allows them to migrate to a different platform that. Right. You know, <laughs> that's not necessarily very right. valid. Uh, yeah, especially given now that you've got the DCCs. It's such a mature industry at this point. Right. You can't you can't have the walled garden. You can't. Right. I mean, the Max community was great for you know for what it is, but you know you've got downward pressure from Blender, which is now not uh, a, a kind of a hobbyist toy. It's a real tool. Yeah. Um, you've got you know multiple renders. You've got no one has kind of the single application pipeline. I mean, I still mm-hmm. remember being shocked when I first found out like Blur was the Max house that I had known forever. And suddenly right. they had soft homage for character animation. We're like, what? Oh, okay. That right. kind of broke the seal on everybody is going to use what's best to get the job done Yep. because oh, sure. timelines are tight and you've just got to get the work done. Yeah. yeah. Well, and especially a place like yeah, talent as well. Yes, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, and, and, you know, well, Blur had to very reluctantly give up on Soft Same here. Uh, yeah. Same here. <laughs> yes, he's still yeah. bitter about it. I'm yeah, still very yeah, bitter yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah, I think my 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 buddy Ben Ben Proctor, he's like he's still like I still keep a copy. <laughs> it's like oh, okay. I told Bo I had to I had to I was looking for some old files and I had to bust up an old copy of it. I hadn't used it in years, and I had to actually install like an older copy because some of the new Microsoft like extensions don't support it anymore. So oh, I had wow. to use like I had to use like a 2012 version or something like that. But it was very That's crazy. It was, it was strange being back in it, having spent so much time in it, you know, right. we were talking, 
a very big portion of my life was spent in soft image. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. I I also you know can we we mentioned earlier it's like you're using FBX and it's like it's like yeah of course you're using FBX because that's you know right now the best format but I find it so ironic that this format that was invented as some way to get your data out of the mo motion capture. Yeah, <laughs> became yes. the standard oh. somehow of data translation, and yeah. it's just not well suited for that. <laughs> That's really no, not. Really is really not. No, we <laughs> and it's still very I much mean, a black box. I mean, oh, it is. It is. We struggled because we, you know, we wanted to support a PBR standard, and we, we right. couldn't do it with FBX. You know, not right. without building our own YAML file to, to carry that data across. So, you know, there was huge limitations with it. Right. So, so do you guys work with, like, like for example, USD? I've been to several of the USD meetings at SIGGRAPH, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously, that's a universal format, an open source format. Are you guys contributing to that? Because obviously, you've got so much data that is out there that I'm sure you must have some way of thinking about how your users are using that. Are you guys part of that in some ways? So early on, we, ahead, yeah, Dave. absolutely. Early on, we, we definitely worked when Pixar first was beginning to announce the availability of it. We were there, um, okay. We because you know being who we are, you know the sort of Switzerland of the three D industry. You know we <laughs> want content that goes everywhere. Uh, yeah. Right. So we we were seeing it as the as the uh, we were going to push it as far as we could. So we were there from the beginning. But um, but now it's it's it it is exciting to see that so many DCCs are finally beginning to adopt it. Right. And it's. And it's been, like you said, it seems like it's been reluctant, uh, reluctantly accepted. Um, I think I think part of the acceleration for it was when Apple announced USDZ, mm -hmm. um, and we they came to us to ask for us to help have compatible content early on as well. We were part of their developer keynote two or three years ago, whenever it was that they originally launched. We got on the slide with our tie and everyone was like jumping up and down. It's like, yes, we finally made it. We're in an Apple keynote now. Right. Um, and we started to explore really deeply what the format did. And we were like, why wouldn't you want to use this no matter what app you were in? I mean, this right. is, it just, it's so straightforward and so robust and production proven too. I mean, the only problem was getting the tools because they put all the source code up and it was like, okay, if you're a developer, have fun. If right. you're not a developer, boy, God help you to try and right. compile it. It took us forever to get it to, to work. And then Apple provided tools. And then now it's becoming, you, you know, it's in NVIDIA's Omniverse. It's everywhere yeah, else. Yeah. I mean, it's just those tools are out there. I was in the early days of that. I'll tell you a funny story. I, as you, 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 I don't, you probably know, and I started the, um, the, the wiki human project, as you probably remember from a long time yeah. ago. Yep. And, uh, I was working on stuff and, uh, some of our friends, some of the people on the, the, the project, uh, uh, were actually at, at, uh, Pixar and they had done a bunch of stuff on hair and they said, Oh, cool. Can I, can you pass me some of the hair? And they said, sure. And this is, this is probably like five years ago, right? And they sent yeah. me a USD file. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> it's like, how am I going to open this? It's like, well, it's open source. How hard can it be? Right? Oh, and no. so, <laughs> and so I said, and, famous last word. I know. Yeah. And so I was like, okay. And so I said, uh, all right. So I, uh, someone says like, well, the best path for you to open a USD file right now is probably in Houdini. Like that's probably your best bet. And yeah. I said, okay. And so that's, but there was no plugin. So you still have to compile the plugin for Houdini. So yeah. I asked, <laughs> I asked the, uh, uh, some guy, a friend of mine who was a big Houdini user. He goes, I have n just no way this is working. I have no idea what's going on. This is really, really, and he's a big Houdini user. Oh, so then yeah. I finally like said, you know what? I have access to like some of the smartest Bulgarian developers around. So I just contacted <laughs> yeah. the guys and they're like the top, you know, Houdini developers. And he's like, okay, sure. Let me look into it. Took him a week to compile the plugin of USD for Houdini. Now, granted, this Man. was a long time ago, <laughs> right? Yeah. But it was yeah. not like the, so I was like, there's no way that USD is going to be popular if this is the state of the situation. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. it, the times have changed quite a bit at this point. And actually Houdini is still like doing really well. In fact, that's a oh, most yeah. of a lot of our request of UD yep. of USD stuff is coming from our Houdini people. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Hydra is really interesting and Solaris is really interesting. Yeah, and yeah. the more I sort of dig into this, you know, we, we developed VR scene files 
out of necessity. There was nothing that right. could do something like that, right? Uh, yep. And uh, and it's a great format, and it does a lot of things. But the more we look at it, it's like, well, USDs kind of do almost exactly the same thing as a USD file, or as a VRC yeah. scene file. So VRC, right. it's really interesting to think about where the world is going to go uh, at oh, this point. Sure. But uh, well, yeah, I really we, love we, it. We, we actually have a, a, um, a process in our pipeline to utilize VRC files like a USD. So... We, we basically, we have a, a WebGL uh, viewer that you can, oh, manipulate nice. you can manipulate lights and do whatever you want and get kind of a, a general sense in real time uh, on, a, on a very meager machine and then submit it uh, for render on v in V-Ray. And basically what it does is it takes uh, the existing VR scene file and then takes whatever mm -hmm. deltas that have been changed and then adds those deltas to the VR scene file. This is right. basically what, what you could do with with USD, you know, yeah. you could utilize the layers in USD to do the exact same thing. And so we utilize yeah. VR scenes for that. And then we just render it in V-Ray and it works great. Through the app SDK. Yeah. It's part of our Kraken platform. It lets all of the non-technical, non-3D artists play with the 3D and WebGL, get the lighting and then go render. And it's okay. like, there it all is. Right. I, I, well, I want to get into Kraken then. So, so, so since we're <laughs> on the subject, what, 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 what gave you the idea? First of all, what is it? And what gave you the idea? How did this all germinate? And what, it, what is it that it does? So, so Kraken was, it, or Kraken is, it's not was, it is a 3d asset management system. It's, they call them a dam digital asset management system. Yep. Terrible name for all of that. Mm -hmm. The whole reason we built Kraken in the first place was that we had, you know, when um, VR and AR first came out in 2015, 2016, and you had big companies seeing what like Ikea and Wayfair and Target were doing, they immediately were like, oh my God, we've got to do that now. But they were all way behind on 3D. So they mm -hmm. started buying a lot of content. They were building a lot of content. They were outsourcing a lot of content. And they all came to TurboSquid and said, we... I'm kind of stupid series. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they all went, we don't know what we have anymore. Our stuff is scattered everywhere. It's on OneDrive and Dropbox and Google and the network and an FTP site and all the artists have stuff. And now we can no longer manage the, the amount of content that we're, we're trying to wrangle. And it's not like, you know, a, a traditional kind of 2D dam like Widen or Adobe Experience Manager where it's just pixels. Here's your image. It's in a format. Like mm -hmm. it's all the stuff that goes with it. And they said, well, look, we love TurboSquid and we love searching. Can we just publish everything to TurboSquid? We don't want to sell it. We don't want anyone else to see it. But So it's like your own personal TurboSquid. Essentially, yes. And so <laughs> we basically, it, it was designed as kind of a white labeled version of the TurboSquid search architecture mm -hmm. to manage 3D content. Now, that was the original plan. It's certainly evolved a long way from there. Right, um, yeah. but that's that's really what Kraken is. Is it's designed to help people manage all of their content. I mean, we've worked with Neoscape, who was, you know, and Carlos and his team. They were yep. getting ready to throw away all of their their stuff. We flew wow. up to Boston last year before all the craziness started, and sat down with them. And they were like, they were at wit's end. They were like, we don't have a librarian. We can't manage this. It's all on a central server. We know where it is but we don't even know what we have because everyone's yeah. taken a shot at trying to wrangle the library. And so they had duplication and stuff in yeah. multiple, it was no organization. Different versions. So, is this the right version? And the right. <laughs> so, yes. And so we, we said, listen, we'll give you a hard drive, send us your data. We'll go ahead and show you what you own in Kraken. And then we literally processed all of their models. It was almost 60,000 models that they had had over their 20 wow. plus years. And yep. we did beautiful renders and we captured metadata and we do machine learning um, image based recognition against the turbo squid feature graph, which is our taxonomy and showed them so that they could search for their content by poly counts, by renderer, by format, by, you know, all of that stuff. They were like, wow, okay, this, this helps quite a bit. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so, I bet. I bet. I mean, that's a great idea, but you said it, it evolved quite a bit since then. What else does it do at this point? <laughs> Um, we have, it, it is, it, it can also, it has a, an entire project system mm -hmm. so that any kinds of automatable tasks right now that you have, whether it's certification of content, we, we've plugged in our checkmate standard so that you can feed it, batch it a whole bunch of content that's in your library and have it actually tell you, is this content good or bad? Right. You can convert the file formats from one type to another. So we actually have a project type 
that'll take a Max V-Ray file and convert it into what we call our lens file. So both the WebGL GLTF file and the VR scene file that are matched pairs so that you can actually do all the offline rendering. It can do stem cell conversions. So you feed it a file and you can actually do it that way. We're, we're working with a German technology company for decimation um, that we can feed in models and have them actually optimize those models on the fly. So lots of kind of automated task endpoint stuff. We've, um, we added collections so that you can actually, instead of downloading a model, you can actually kind of assemble everything you want, pull it all down. You can share it with somebody who doesn't have access to the library. If you need to show USDZ files to somebody, you can actually do that through a collection and they'll be able to open it on their iPad and see it with AR Quick Look without doing anything extra other than wow. just getting the link. So, yeah, it's it's still expanding. We get requests all the time oh, yeah. um, for, for lots of features. So we're by no means anywhere close to being where we want to be. Right. <laughs> it's it's still an ongoing evolution, but it's it's a fun platform. Yeah. And you mentioned you mentioned you basically have essentially in browser uh, WebGL version of the thing that you can move around, tweak, do lightings in 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 WebGL, but then you hit the button and it renders in V-Ray on the cloud, right? Yeah. Uh, using App SDK, yep. is that correct? Yeah, it's, so, it's actually not using the cloud right now. It's actually using local machines. Okay, and it was only because we weren't sure of usage, and our okay. clients right now wanted very predictable pricing. And they didn't know what they would use. So for to start, we're like, okay, we'll set you up with machines and you'll mm -hmm. render on those. And if you need more machines, then there's fixed costs to each of those and you're paying for the hardware and things like that. Right. Ultimately, we do want to switch to the cloud rendering. Got um, it. But there's still some more kind of data gathering that has to happen, I think, to make that work. So why do people want to do renders of things is it they want to create they basically just curious about the image they don't necessarily want to do much more beyond no it's that. it's the marketing teams that are yeah. beholden to the 3d teams then the 3d teams are busy so they don't want to you know they're like mm -hmm. the redheaded stepchild they're like no i'll get to you i'll get you your image later for our product documentation or the advertisement or whatever right. with with the kraken lens studio they can do a quick comp with the WebGL download. They basically get a WebGL render that they can put in Photoshop. It comes in with a perfect transparency to it mm -hmm. so that they can get approvals right away without ever involving a 3D artist. And once they get the approvals, they hit render and they can render up to, I think that one of our bigger clients is rendering up to 11 K yeah. for like trade show booths and billboards and stuff like that. So, That's awesome. Yeah. 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 And so, then they, they don't, you don't have to, yeah, and you don't have to sit there and learn Max or Maya or do anything. You just render nope. it right there. Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this gets you gets you into the zone of uh, stock imagery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you can yes. see where I'm leading this conversation. <laughs> 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 so you guys had some 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 big news recently. This was kind of a big deal. Uh, so I know you're so so much you can say about it because things are still in flux. But basically, give us people an idea of what happened recently. Hey, do you want to take that, or you want me to take that? <laughs> well, I, we can both we can both take it. So okay. so um, I mean, clearly we were we were uh, acquired by Shutterstock back in January, I believe. Um, February first. Yeah. February first. Official yeah. launch. Not this and, year, uh, last year. No, it was this, no, this year. year. This, this, this year, year. Yeah. yeah. So it's so it's it's fairly recent. Um, right. And uh, so far, you know, mostly everything um, has stayed the same. You know, we we still run our marketplace. We still, uh, you know, uh, develop Kraken, and you know, not a, a tremendous, uh, not a lot has, has changed for us um, so far. But you know, we now have, you know a much bigger reach, right, than we ever had before. We can then start expanding uh, more uh, to to a more usable content, right, content that is more suited to, to the prosumer, which is, you know, what we were just talking about, where anyone can use 3D. Pixel Squid falls uh, well into that realm of, of stock photography where, you know, the, the only difference is you get to choose your angle, you know, um, compared to a, an average stock image. And so... Um, so we just see it really as a, a a massive opportunity for growth, right? Like let's let's start really figuring out how we can democratize 3D for everyone, like for all users. 
Um, because it's right. not everyone that's going to be able to learn 3D Studio Max, you know, or, or, or Cinema 4D, you know, right. or, or the, all the renders that go along with it. And then even choosing which renderer is best for them. Uh, this way, you know, they can just utilize that 3D content as easily as possible. So, um, but there's a lot going on. You, you'll see coming in the, in the next, uh, in the uh, upcoming yeah. months, a lot more going on. It, it's been a bit of an eye opener to go from a company of 70 people, roughly, to mm-hmm. a, com- a worldwide company over a thousand people. Um, that's right. been, you know, with lots of moving parts all at once. So that, you know, integration. Fortunately, the culture is really matched very well. It's a, it's a very energetic, very creative group that we're now with. And so, and they've done, you know, they're a stock marketplace. They're a media marketplace already. So it's not like some random company acquired us that doesn't know our business. They know exactly what stock business is. Mm-hmm. Now we're getting to train them on 3D. I can tell you their salespeople are dying to start selling 3D for us at this point because they have clients. We never, you know, they have ends with these companies. We couldn't even knock on the door and get right. an answer. <laughs> so the opportunities are humongous at this point. It is, it's been an eye opener for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I am, I am positive that that's the case. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, there's, it totally makes sense that, you know, Shutterstock probably leading stock photography place out there would say we need to get into other markets and 3d and the, 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 the it actually makes complete sense that you guys were acquired by them. If you were acquired by Honda, right. I would be a little confused. But uh, <laughs> us too. <laughs> yeah. But if you, but Shutterstock obviously makes sense. What's interesting to me is to think about what that means. Obviously, okay, now we can also sell 3D content. That makes sense, yeah. right? Or yeah. now we can basically, you know, this based on what you talked about with Kraken, it's like you can make your own 3D content or select the angles you want or, or your own 2D yeah. content. But also. I can imagine a place where Kraken, I'm sorry, uh, Shutterstock could just make a ton of images based on all of your content. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Just make 2D images of all of it. (laughs) Yeah. Theoretically, yes. So it's going to, you know, it's, I mean, the whole reason we built Pixel Squid in the first place was that we had non 3D artists asking us, can I, look, I love the, the picture of this speaker. Can I get it? I don't know how to use 3D though, so I can't use the 3D model. And it was like, right. oh, okay. So now they have Pixel Squid that they can spin around and find the angle, and it works in Photoshop. And you know, we'll be certainly looking to integrate in lots of other locations. I think, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Pixel Squid technology as well. But yeah, I think that there are there's a lot of low hanging fruit around the being able to make sure that our contributors, those 3D artists, are making money from every possible way that we can help them yeah. get their content out there. So, yeah. So, so that let's, 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 let's go through that scenario. Right. So uh, I am a 3d artist and I made some really pretty content that is uh, uh, let's say, let's say I made a really awesome model of the coronavirus. Let's put it that way. All right. <laughs> like a lot <laughs> okay. of people are looking for some <laughs> s- stock images of the coronavirus, but they're all using the same one. So they want to be able to customize it slightly for their content. Right. Yeah. So they go yeah. to, they go to Shutterstock now, let's say, and they say, ah, look, you, know, you can get a, these images of the coronavirus, which everyone's using, or you can make your own. With yeah. uh, with uh, Turbo Squid or whatever, and here it is, and you don't even have to use any 3D applications. You just kind of move it around like your own little photo studio. That's basically, yeah. am I right? That's, that, that's the experience yeah. you're going to get, right? Oh, sure. And so sure. now, this certainly is one of the avenues. I mean, again, you'll have Turbo Squid, which will still be selling the 3D model. Right. You'll have, for people who want to go in and really do some modifications to it, you'll have a Pixel Squid version of that model that right. will allow the the infinite angles that you can still go in and do color corrections and touch ups and, you know, right. tweak it and tune it. And then you may just have static photos of it as well. Right. Um, that you can, and, then you can pick from. So, so how does the that, person who made the original asset, how does he, how is he going to, how is he getting paid for like someone buying that image uh, off, off uh, Shutterstock? How does that, does he still get the, the, the royalties off of that or how does it work? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the contributors still own their, their content that they're providing regardless we do okay. we do it now as a matter of fact that there's you know everything you see on pixel squid is already on turbo squid so right. 
you know, the artist is getting their normal royalty rates on Turbo Squid. We've got a royalty structure for Pixel Squid already so that they're seeing those as separate um, mm -hmm. revenue streams inside their own dashboards. So that's just going to continue. Um, we'll be, I'm sure, integrating all of that with, with Shutterstock's, you know, uh, analytics and, and their accounting and things like that moving forward. So, but it's, it's not going to change. We're not going to, you know, um, tell them that they don't get the rights to certain oh, no. ways of sure. the, you know, their content being used. So, so I can imagine now basically, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a regular contributor to, to Turbo Squid in terms of my models, et cetera, et cetera, I, but I rely mostly on, on Turbo Squid selling to my model to people or to companies or to whatever, yep. because of the share side, that, list or library of people that are browsing their content has gone up quite a bit at this point oh, or will be going yeah. up quite a bit. Absolutely. <laughs> by a, by a yes. huge magnitude. And, and again, <laughs> he's got a word and you've got a worldwide sales force that is going to be selling to their customers as well. Whereas before it was, I think four of us that were kind of selling and it wasn't our primary jobs. I mean, I'm part of right. the sales team as well. But I do, you know, the Kraken demos and, you know, I do a lot of the kind of the technical demo. And I've certainly been doing 3D long enough like Dade that, you know, I can at least speak to that. But just being able to go knock on doors and say, hey, are you using 3D? Can you, I mean, that's not what we've done. Shutterstock, boy, they've got that Salesforce just supercharged. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we're, we're fully expecting that 3D is going to, to take off in lots of different ways. Yeah, that's very, very, very interesting. And I think you guys are are doing some interesting work in that area. Uh, I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, we're... Go ahead, Dave. Oh, I was just going to say... I was going to say that we... <laughs> we get excited. We get so excited. I know, it is. It's, it's a fun uh, time. Dave, why don't you do it? Go ahead, Dave. That way I'll say... <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I was going to say, I was going to say, like, and, and I kind of felt like you were going in this, in this direction, Chris, is that... Also, there's the smart content, right? So there's a reason why we're net, we're migrating or evolving our pipeline into USD, and that is so that we can enable smart content. We want people to not only to be able to rotate the object, but we want them to be able to make the the crowns on the coronavirus purple instead of red uh, yep. on on the fly, and have it react with lighting or illuminate them or do other things with uh, with that, pose it in, in more unique ways, add a couple of them, and pile them together. You know, th those are the things that we want to offer to more customers, right? We want we want people who don't know 3D to actually be able to utilize 3D. Uh, and right. really, and, and the the best way to do that is give them the models, like let them let them have those models, like give them, but let them have those models to, to utilize in every way they can imagine, right? That they right. just work, right? There's no conversion necessary. It's a native experience. You, you just load them in, they, they look the way you want them to look, you can manipulate them at, at will, and then get the imagery out that, you, that you're that you looking for. Things you might not be able to find at a typical stock site, you know, you're kind of like, well, I guess I could Photoshop that a little bit, I can move that on this side and bring another one in. Lighting won't match. We're looking at solving that, right? Like we want, we want those 2D customers to be able to take that content and customize it exactly the way that they want it. And that, and we think that's through USD and smart contract. Yeah. And, and, and we, you know, we've seen that with what chaos group is doing with cosmos. Yeah. And, right. And you know, the, the other nice thing about where we are at Shutterstock is we still get to play with all our friends in the right. industry. It's not like we've been cut off from the world here and are being redirected. It's like, we want to help find new ways and new blue ocean for that content to be successful and to make money. So right. why wouldn't we be talking to, you know, to you guys about having Cosmos compatible content that touches a lot of industries that we're not currently in, you know, that sort yeah. of thing is, is certainly valuable too. Yeah. I think that's important for people because I don't think people necessarily realize if you look at it very simply, they think as Cosmos as like a version of Turbo Squid. It's like, no, not, <laughs> not exactly. We work very closely with Turbo Squid. It would be stupid for us to shoot ourselves in the foot like that, right? Because oh. no, and that's just, it's just a means of us to be able to get people to get where they're going faster, right? And there's a problem that people are, are overcoming by by doing that. So it's really great. I mean, I, I mean, like I said, we've worked with you guys for uh, 
ever. And you guys are even using, yeah. you know, V-Ray app SDK to do a lot of the <laughs> heavy lifting under there. So exactly. uh, we're yep. very happy about, about what that means. Uh, so I do, I do have a, I'm going to go, I know you can't necessarily, I'm just curious about your thoughts on this, right? So 3D content now is going to become even more important because right now most 3D content is thought of as something that you need to make a rendering of, right? But yep. 3D content is going to become even more important in the future, possibly, with this big push that we're seeing in terms of something called uh, the metaverse. <laughs> yes. What well, you mentioned that, yeah. <laughs> now, what what are your what are your thoughts about that? Because you know, my son buys a lot of three D content in Fortnite. A lot, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. spends a shitload of money on most of his allowance goes to buying three D content. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would imagine so. Yes. Well, I mean, you so, know, what's so what's your thoughts is, on that? It, it, it is, it, you know, let's let's think of um, let's think of like the, the simulation world, right? So. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want if I want to teach um, a car how to drive, uh, the the old school way was that you sent someone off on the road and they would go and and record the path of the vehicle and get all the things that are happening, and then all that data would be fed to a farm somewhere where they would isolate everything inside that footage, label it, let the machine know. I mean, the machines need to know what they're looking at, and uh, mm -hmm. and what 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 companies are finding is that in actuality, simulation is the better way to go. Right? It's a lot cheaper if you could just build this metaverse uh, where uh, you have roads and uh, even that's procedurally generated that you could then mimic whatever uh, uh, conditions you, you would just so happen to have to stumble across in the real world. And so we're seeing that. Even. It's also safer in case you crash. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. much safer. Or, 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 or to know, put driving, on, you know, yeah. you can't you can't recreate, you know, weird uh, real world obstacles, you know, the the truck carrying all the chicken coops and all of a sudden all of them fall off into the middle of the freeway. Yep. And how do you avoid, it's like, you can't go and recreate that in the real world. You know, yeah. that's just impractical. And so, and so the world needs to exist in 3d, right. And all of that content needs to be made and all of that content needs to be put into a format or formats that can easily be consumed. Right. Uh, and like you said, it's not everyone who cares about a beautiful render. Sometimes you just want to teach a machine. Uh, and so, and so th this is where content is really expanding quickly. Um, and, and that goes even with enterprises, right? Enterprises are also looking for, they want their digital counterpart for everything that they make. You know, if uh, you're a computer manufacturer, you want every single keyboard and mouse and uh, workstation and the monitor that, that your company makes, you want that available in yep. 3D. Not, not just for simulation, but all, and not just for... Uh, architects, but uh, maybe it's uh, interior designers. You know, we know that if you uh, put a certain chair in a design, chances are good that's the one that's going to be bought. So why not have that model in 3D, right? Give that, mm -hmm. give that opportunity, uh, you another opportunity to sell that, uh, your goods. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. V-Ray is used in a lot of machine learning. And it was kind of one of those sort of eye openers, like, no, and a lot. <laughs> they make yeah. a lot of images, a ton of images to teach machines oh, yeah. how to recognize things. Oh, wow. uh, no, I don't doubt it. Yeah. So uh, I was really surprised to find find out about that. So yes, it's interesting. The machine learning part of of and all the content you're doing out there is really interesting as well. Um, yeah. I also I also think that the the coronavirus did kind of accelerate the whole transition to digital for a lot of companies just in general in terms of how they present themselves. So the metaverse is, again, there is an e-commerce component. There is a, as Dade said, you know, there's the, um, how you interact with it because you're not going to trade shows now. There's no CES to go and pick up, you know, the next cool tablet and see that can fold in half or whatever. You've got to mm -hmm. be able to represent all of that digitally. So I think that, you know, and now you're seeing more and more with, with AR and MR, you know, experiences that are coming that it's, you know, a lot of, a lot of kind of startups go, Oh, I built the great technology. Now I just need the content. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, no, no, no. The companies that are thinking about the content up front and then building the experience around it are starting to get further ahead, I think. So yeah, that's, no, I, I always, I always said, uh, when I first saw the Lululemon mirror, right. The, the workout mirror, I was mm -hmm. like, you know, that's not for working out. 
that's for showing you augmented reality clothing at home so you can buy it more quickly and easily. Yeah, of you know course. What I mean? like, yeah. ultim- ultimately, that's how that's going to be used to its best uh, advantage for the company. You know? so, and, and you're seeing that like in, in augmented reality, um, apparel is getting huge. Oh, massive. Right? Right. Uh, and, and being able to track that on a person is getting uh, better and better and better. So uh, you see these trends happening. It's, it, and like Bo said, it, it, a lot of it was driven by the coronavirus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and recognizing things like, so you guys, you, you, that's the big thing. Machine learning is about recognizing things. There's a car, there's a chicken, there's a squirrel or whatever it is, you know I mean? Just, just recognizing things. And you know, who's got a lot of things is turbo squid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we, we don't have enough yet though. I mean, we want to, you know, we'd love to be the digital prop shop that has one of everything at least. Okay. You know? So, so, so. let's, let's think about, let's think about that. How, I'm going to try to see if we, we if I'm going to, if I'm going to recruit someone to say, you know what, you, you're a good modeler. You should make a bunch of stuff in Turbo Squid and stuff like that. What what do you guys need? What is actually out there? What's in demand that's underrepresented on your site? Oh my goodness. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, boy, I don't know if I have a good answer for that. Yeah, I think that there are, uh, you could take almost any category. Let's take fire hydrants. You know, okay. there are, there are, you know, hundreds on Turbo Squid, but how many of them come from India or from um, a specific prefecture in Japan, or you know, there's so many different designs right. that are local or to Australia or to, you yep. know, to the Ukraine or wherever it is, everything is going to look di- slightly different, a parking meter, a, you know, yep. again, speakers, whatever it is, even cars have different configurations based on where they're being sold in the world. Mm-hmm. So trying to, to harness the power of a worldwide art force and yep. the 3D community to start looking around their own spaces to find out what's still missing. I mean, it's right. easy to say, oh, you know, looking at retro stuff, you know, the retro banana dial phone that, you know, it's like, okay, maybe we only have one or two of those, but are they really needed where you want to have, again, one of as many different things that are current and ongoing as you can. Right. Yeah, that's a That's a big you know, ambitious goal that I think that we want to chase down. So that's, that's kind of a part of our methodology around developing the standard because without the standard underlying all of that, Mm -hmm. you've just got more of the wild west and that doesn't help. So you've got to build the standard upon which all this stuff fits so that yes, you can now syndicate it and move it and have train, you know, all the machine learning algorithms and give it to artists and basically make it ubiquitous. Right. Right. It's interesting. I mean, I'm curious, like, you know, it would be nice if like I was a person that's like, okay, I'm going to model something and I can go to Turbo Squid and see what's the most in demand or what is there, you know, like the people, the most searches and then try to be able to go as like, ah, look, people are looking for a whole lot of this airplane or something. And then, then it's not available or something. I'd be curious. Yeah, I, to think, find I out. think that's, yeah, I think that's the direction that we're moving in is that we want to be able to offer people more advice on the things that, that are needed. Right, right. give them opportunities to build those things and make and make uh, more money off of them. So it's, I think right. that's all part of the plan as well of building out the metaverse, if you will. Well, that's really interesting. All right, so we're 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 rounding to the corner here. So, uh, is there anything you guys can tell us about what we can look forward to? What's going on here? Where's what's some of the future? Something exciting happening, or some tastes or hints of something? Anything you can say about? It? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, like I said, we we are looking at a new um, sort of a artist-friendly publishing platform that uh, will make it a little bit easier to create uh, stem cell content, see how that content interacts and, and uh, publish that uh, much easier uh, than everything uh, currently. The, um, the thing that makes it really exciting is that all of this content as, as it's created, like we will syndicate that in every way that you can imagine. Uh, so you'll have an opportunity to sell one 3D model in absolutely every um, industry that you can like creative industry on, on the planet pretty much. Uh, so, awesome. so that's something that's coming really soon is sort of a wuzzy wig publisher, um, which is really right. exciting. Um, and, um, uh, and then of course, you know, with, with the new, uh, stem cell, we're looking to open that up, um, to uh, utilizing animations and rigging and be able to share those, uh, more readily throughout different pipelines. Um, and then through the use of, of uh, USD being able to, offer variants um, so that customers can dial in the, the type of content that they want 
So there's a lot of really, really cool things that are opening up 3D to, like I said, democratizing 3D to a wider audience. So I think it's going to be pretty awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. This has been this has been fabulous. Uh, I really like uh, I really here. like what you guys are doing. Very exciting you to be part of Shutterstock. I'm sure you guys are eager to go to go hang out with them because you guys you guys got acquired. This, you, I'm sure you haven't been able to hang out with anyone nope. yet, right? So it's good. No, no, unfortunately not. We're we're dying to see the, the the main headquarters now in New York. We're two floors of the Empire State Building. Nice. So as soon as the yeah. world becomes fun, man, I can't wait to, to get up there to, to see the office and, and meet people face to face that we've been interacting with day to day. They're in their homes. We're here. I mean, right. Onboarding into a new company virtually has been a challenge, but I'm sure you yeah. know, we're now yeah. over two months in. So the, all the dust is finally settling and we're starting to get comfortable. And um, but it'll be fun to be able to kind of interact with people again. Right. Oh yeah. But Turbo Can't Squid wait. is still staying Turbo Squid for for as long as like, we know, right? So like, yeah. Yep. Good. Yep. Yep. And our headquarters awesome. are staying in New Orleans as well. So. Right. Yeah, we're not. Which is great. <laughs> so when yeah. I when I go when I when I go down to to Louisiana to go fly fishing for uh, for redfish, I'm will I will definitely be checking in on your office down there. <laughs> By all yes, means, we'll, we'll actually go out and show you a good time. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. That'd be fun. <laughs> that would be a good all time. Right. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. (laughs) 